In this installment, we're going to be going over the NFL bets for week four, the late slate. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to give you the winning ingredients for our NFL bet slate for week four. This is the late slate here, 4 p.m. and the primetime 8 o'clock game. All will be covered in this video. But before we deep dive into that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MetsNetsJetsD. Don't forget about that TikTok at Chef underscore D91. And don't forget about that Patreon. Right now, we're at the homepage of the YouTube channel, currently at 8.45 thousand subscribers. This is the road to 10K, and we're well, well on our way because you guys are showing up each and every single day. If you're already subscribed, continue to like and comment so we can grow to a much broader audience here. It helps, everything helps that YouTube algorithm, all right? So definitely continue to show support and by the next video let's get that 8.45 let's get it to 8.46 all right i highly highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button all right now for the patreon um if you guys did not sign up you missed out on a very good college football slate on saturday if you want to get geared up for sunday i'm telling you right now to sign up but this was the um community parlay i gave out here I gave out two of them. All right. One of them didn't hit. One of them did hit. This was the one that did hit. Plus 738. Uh, Indiana, minus five and a half. Nebraska, minus eight and a half to bounce back. Navy, uh, minus two and a half. And they destroyed UAB. And then James Madison, who had that big upset last week, uh, followed them right up again against Ball State. And they dominated them in that game. Uh, that came through as well. So if you want to sign up for winning plays, if you want daily bets, future bets, and access to that group chat, you sign up right now to the Patreon. That link is provided down below in the description section. I'm so excited to announce I have partnered with BetStamp and Sign Up Expert to provide you guys with an easier way to sign up with any sportsbook in your area. If you go to the link in the description down below, you will be directed to this page you see here. It automatically displays all available sports books in your area, plus their current promotions. For example, you could take the plays given in this video and apply it to any other sports books you don't currently have and reap the rewards. Now let's get into the slate. In State Farm Stadium here, Arizona Cardinals going up against the Red Hot Washington Commanders. Looking at the current odds here, we have the Cardinals as home favorites minus 185. With the comeback of the commanders at a plus 150 point spread set at three and a half total points set at 49 uh, for the public bet percentage here. We have 74 percent of the bets towards Arizona, but 55 percent of the money here coming in on Washington as underdogs. So sharps are looking at Washington uh, after that Monday night football game against the Bengals. Uh, thinking that this is another prime spot to strike here uh, for the point spread. We have 56 percent of the bets towards Washington to cover. Uh, but we have 71% of the money for Arizona to cover. Um, for the total points, 90% of the bets and 94% of the money towards the over 49 in this total, uh, which this should be a very, very explosive game here. But we do have some injuries. Uh, Trey McBride, Arizona Cardinals, it will be without their uh, very, very young and exciting tight end and Trey McBride. Elijah Higgins will be taking his spot. Um, Crete Tonga. D lineman, he's going to be out. So those are two outs there. Isaiah um, Adams will be questionable. Wait on news if he's going to be able to play for the Arizona Cardinals and help block for Kyler Murray. Uh, Washington Commanders here, no injuries of concern. They did not update the Friday list. Uh, so as of right now, I'm not seeing anyone of importance that's is going to be out for the Commanders. Oh, uh, Austin Eckler. So we have Austin Eckler going to be out for the Commanders. That's going to lean uh, upon Brian Robinson to be the lead back here. And Cleveland Farrell here, who they got from the Raiders, um, he's going to be out as well as a DN. Jamison Crowder, the journeyman uh, wide receiver, is going to be out as well. So Austin Eckler, they had a nice little one-two punch there uh, for the Commanders in the first couple weeks. They're going to be out uh, with without Eckler. And it's going to lean all upon Brian Robinson, who has played phenomenal uh, so far this year. 
All right, so for this particular game, the, the total, we're going to hammer that right now. Love the over on the total. Uh, love. Well, no, no, no. I don't love the over total. This is what's going to happen. The Cardinals defense is very, very underrated. Um, I understand the last past couple, well, the last three weeks for the commanders, they have been super, super efficient here. Um, not having, not punting the ball. And in every possession, they were able to put points on the board. All right. So they've been super efficient with this Cliff Kingsbury offense. The Cardinals are very, very, very familiar with cliff kingsbury often so that is the huge huge trump card like no one's looking at this thinking that this is a spot where the commanders would come in i can definitely see this cardinals defense who uh definitely stymied the lions and held them to 20 points and held the rams to 10 points uh bills were able to put 34 points um against them in that game but they kept that very close and got out to an early lead but the key point is Cliff Kingsbury. All right. They were just he was just in Arizona. You telling me this defense doesn't know how to defend Cliff Kingsbury's offense. I'm telling you right now, they're going to be in a world of hurt. They sold you so much week after week on. And they're showing you all the stats to how efficient and good Jaden Daniels is. I can definitely see him have some trouble in this particular game because this is a very, very familiar opponent. They understand Cliff Kingsbury to a T here. So give me the Cardinals on the money line at a minus 185. I love Kyler um, against this horrible secondary. So they've been they've been really covering. Jaden Daniels has been covering for the fact that this commander's defense is a hole in a wall. It's a giant hole in the wall. And uh, Marvin Harrison should have a phenomenal day. James Conner running should have a phenomenal day as well. And Kyler should be going for multiple touchdowns as well. So Cardinals on the money line. We're going Cardinals uh, to cover the spread at minus three and a half. And we're going with the under 49 total points. I expect the Cardinals to score points, but I do expect the commanders to struggle to put up points because of this Cardinals defense and the familiar familiarity with Cliff Kingsbury's offense. All right. In Levi Stadium here, we have the San Francisco 49ers one and two going against the New England Patriots one and two. But looking at the current odds, we have the 49ers as huge home favorites, minus 550 on the money line with the comeback of the Patriots at a plus 400 point spread set at 10 total points set at 40 and a half. Uh, public bet percentage here, 94 percent of the bets. But 53% of the money on the side of the 49ers for the point spread. 69% of the bets, 75% of the money towards the 49ers to cover. And for the total points, 95% of the bets and 90% of the money towards the over 40 and a half. Uh, looking at the injury report here, the 49ers had a ton of injuries last week. Looking at this report this week, Javon Hargrave is going to be out. Curtis Robinson, linebacker, is going to be out. The key component here for the 49ers is going to be Debo Samuel and Trent Williams. All right. Um, we have to wait on news about Trent Williams because if he is out and missing in this offensive line, uh, that's going to be a, a big issue there for the 49ers. OK, also for Debo Samuel, um, he, he was limited on Thursday and Friday. Still highly questionable for this game on Sunday. So wait on news for him. Right now, it's looking like Kittle is going to play. He did get a full practice in on Friday. That is a positive sign that he's going to play. So Jawan Jennings, Brandon Ayuk, and George Kittle, as of right now, wait on news about Debo and Trent Williams. Uh, for the Patriots, um, some of their outs will be Alex Austin, cornerback out. Michael, uh, Michael, Mike Jordan is going to be out and Vidarian Lowe is going to be out as well at tackle. Uh, but we do see some positives here. Uh, for this offensive line, City Sal, who missed last week um, in that Jets game, and Caden Wallace, who missed last week, um, uh, should be able to play in this one here. They were all limited in practice Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So if they get those two guys back, that's definitely going to bode well for them in establishing the run game and Ramon J. Stevenson uh, to help mitigate uh, the San Francisco 49ers. All right. So what the Patriots do here and what we're going to be leaning towards is uh, this run defense. OK, this uh, Patriots run defense has been phenomenal this year. And that is what uh, Gerard Mayo wants you to do. All right. He's going to stop the run and force you to pass the ball. And we're talking about uh, Brock Purdy here who does have some tendencies to turn the ball over um, in, in certain situations. If he's going to be missing some of his talented guys um, out on the field, 
And especially if you got Christian Gonzalez on the opposite side here for the Patriots as, at cornerback. He's a, he's a lockdown corner here. If he can take one of your main guys away, then they can definitely create um, some uh, double teams on George Kittle and or Debo Samuel and get you in some tough predicaments. All right, so that is what the Patriots defense is going to have to do. Stop that run game in Jordan Mason and then limit the attempts to the number one wide receiver with uh, Christian Gonzalez and make you lean on the secondary pieces. All right, so that's what Gerard Mayo has been implementing. And that's why the Patriots have looked OK this year. We thought they were going to be absolutely horrible. They've been competitive in a few games so far this year. Uh, we got a ton of public love on the 49ers in this cover. I'm going to be staying away from that. I like the, the point spread on the Patriots in this one. So give me the plus 10 on the point spread, the best value on the board. And obviously, I think the 49ers are going to get this win. I just don't think it's going to be by 10 points. And for the over under, I'm going to be leaning towards the under of 40 and a half. There's going to be a tightly contested battle here. Both teams are going to struggle to score. And we're going to be leaning on both defenses uh, that are going to be winning this battle. All right. So uh, 49ers on the money line, Patriots plus 10 under on 40 and a half in allegiant stadium here las vegas raiders one and two going to be against the cleveland browns one and two looking at the current odds right here we have the browns as road favorites yes you heard that correctly i couldn't believe i had to take my efforts out the browns as road favorites huh I, I, I don't know what i just saw i don't know what i just saw so current odds somehow the browns are road favorites it's <laughs> Minus 135 on the money line with the comeback of the Raiders at a plus 115. Point spread set at two and a two and a half. Yo, they are they're oh my god. Total points at 36. All right. Full game uh public bet percentage here. 51% of the bets on the the Raiders and 55% of the money on the Cleveland Browns. They got these all oh my this is crazy right now. Uh for the point spread, 52% of the bets. Uh, towards the Browns, 63% of the money towards the Browns to cover the spread. <laughs> oh, I can't right now. Oh, God. Total points, 95% of the bets and 80% of the money on the over 36. Okay. Looking at this injury report, I'm going to get to why I'm laughing. I'm going to get to why I'm laughing very soon. Injury report here. Mason Crosby. Mason. Max Crosby is going to be out. They're uh, all pro um, DN. He's going to be out. That's a loss. Devon Diablo is going to be out. Uh, Thayer Munford uh, Jr. is doubtful. The tackle. Um, Michael Mayer, and he's a backup tight end. He doesn't really matter. He's out. Uh, Devontae Adams is going to be out. So this is why the public is on the Browns. This is crazy. But, but you got, this is crazy. The Browns line is decimated. All right. Remember week one? When they didn't have both of their tackles, yeah, it's, it's again, Jack Conklin, out. Jedrick Wills, out. When you're missing these two tackles and you're talking about a quarterback that can barely even function, they, oh, this doesn't bode well at all. Huge red flags. Huge red flags. Jordan Hicks is questionable. Miles Garrett is going to play. David Njoku is out. Pierre Strong is out. And like I said, both tackles for the Cleveland Browns are out. All right. Where in their right mind do the Browns even deserve to be road favorites? I don't care what team it's against. The Raiders at least played hard. Yes, I get Max Crosby is going to be out this game, but they still got Tyree Wilson and uh, Christian Wilkinson on that D line that can cause havoc. All right. This Raiders defense is underrated. They were embarrassed last week. And we saw Antonio Pierce come out and really put uh, fire to the to the, the feet of his players here and held them accountable. Uh, embarrassing performance against Carolina. He already came out and and was and badgered his whole entire team here. Almost threatened to start um, a, uh, Kevin O'Connell, Aiden O'Connell, excuse me, at quarterback. But this week, they're still guarding with Gardner Minshew here. I'm expecting a very inspired team here for the Las Vegas Raiders at home in Las Vegas. There's so much. There's so much wrong here. We're going to fade the public and fade the Browns. Why are we going with the Browns and Deshaun Watson and no tackles? Oh. 
we're fading the Browns here fully. This is going to be a complete sweep. All right. Raiders on the money line. If you if you're afraid of the money line, take the point spread at plus two and a half. If you can find the three, go ahead and get it. We're going to be all over the Raiders here. Money line point spread. And for the total, we're going to go with the under on the 36 on the total. I expect the Browns offense to struggle mightily here in this spot. We're talking about missing all pro tackles here in Jedrick Wills and Jack Conklin. Uh, he has no one on the left and right side. We saw what happened earlier in week one to the Browns when he didn't ha did not have his tackles. Uh, it was a major issue against the Dallas Cowboys that we saw. Um, so Raiders money line Raiders plus two and a half under on the 36. Don't fall for this trap, man. In SoFi Stadium here, LA Chargers 2-1, going to be against the Kansas City Chiefs 3-0. and oh. uh, For the Chiefs, they are road favorites here. This is a team that deserves to be road favorites. Minus 350 on the money line with the comeback of the Chargers at a plus 275. Point spread set at 7. Uh, total points at 41 and a half. Uh, public bet percentage here, 93% of the bets, 77% of the money all over the Chiefs. For the point spread, it's a little more in the middle here. 63% of the bets and 55% of the money uh, towards the Chiefs to cover that 7. And for the total points here, we have 93% of the bets, 86% of the money towards the over 41 and a half. All right. Um, for the injury report here for the Kansas City Chiefs, we'll start with them. Only one injury, DN Michael Dana. He's going to be out of this game. Everyone else is healthy and fine for the Kansas City Chiefs. I cannot say the same for the LA Chargers. They are dealing with some major, major losses. Um, Joe Alt, their rookie outstanding tackle who's played phenomenal so far this year. A DNP on all three days of, of practice. And he's highly, highly questionable. He's most likely not going to play. When you see three DMPs in a row, that does not bode well. Joey Bosa is going to be out. Their best pass rusher. Junior Colson is going to be out. Um, Darius Davis is questionable. Christian Fulton is questionable. Uh, Justin Herbert is highly questionable with that ankle injury. He had the plantar fascia in the preseason. And now this high ankle sprain. He's going to be limping onto the field here. He's going to give it a go. Uh, but he's highly questionable here for Justin Herbert. Just make sure that he's going to be in the starting lineup here. But he is. It sounded like he's going to give it a go here for his team. Um, Deion uh, Leonard is going to be out. Derwin James is going to be out. And Jasir Taylor is going to be questionable. And then Rashawn Slater out as well. Oh, my God. So we got another situation here with double tackles out. But... Well, Joe Wall is going to be all pro anyway, but Rashawn Slater, all pro, he's going to be out. They're missing two tackles as well. So this does not look good at all. This is a complete onslaught here. Kansas City Chiefs, fully healthy Chargers, dealing with multitude of injuries. Yes, it's an in-division matchup, but if the Chargers can't run the football and they're missing two tackles, uh, that's what they've been doing. They've been playing bully ball with their offensive line. Uh, and you're missing two key cogs there. That does not bode well. This is going to be a complete sweep. Give me the Chiefs on the money line. Chiefs to cover the seven. And I'm going to slightly lean towards the over 41 and a half just because the Chargers are going to be forced uh, to keep up pace with the Chiefs. And I think the over goes uh, over 41 and a half. In MNT Bank Stadium here, we have the Baltimore Ravens going up against the Buffalo Bills here. Ravens 1 and 2, Buffalo Bills 3 and 0 after that, butt kicking of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then Baltimore finally getting a win uh, against the Dallas Cowboys, dominating um, them in the trenches here. So this is a very highly anticipated matchup. Very good game here between the Ravens and Bills. Uh, both of these teams coming off very good wins. So let's look at the odds. Ravens minus 145 on the money line. With the comeback of the Bills at a plus 120, point spread set at two and a half. Total points here set at 46 and a half. So usually when you're a home team, you get three points. Obviously, looking at what we see from the public bet percentage here, uh, the public is on the side of the Bills, and they think the Bills are a better team here. They're taking away that hook, all right, and making it two and a half. So public bet percentage here, 53% of the bets, 68% of the money on the Buffalo Bills. So we have a public and... Uh, sharp underdog here for the point spread 73 percent of the bet 69 percent of the money all over the bills to cover that two and a half and for the total points we have 72 percent of the bet 70 separate 77 percent of the money towards the over 46 and a half all right for the baltimore ravens injury report and bills okay uh jalen Amar davis cornerback he's going to be out 
Tyler Lindenbaum is going to be is questionable. He's most likely going to play. And then offensive lineman Andrew Voorhees is doubtful in this game. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. Uh, for the Buffalo Bills, we have Terrell Bernard, their linebacker. He's going to be out. That's going to be a hit there. Tylen Grable, offensive tackle. He's going to be out. Teron Johnson, cornerback. He's going to be out uh, for the Buffalo Bills. So they're coming. In, they got a few major outs here. Looking at that linebacker and cornerback position on the defense here. Like I said, Buffalo Bills um, coming off a very impressive performance with pretty much a team that that pretty much gave up. The Jacksonville Jaguars did not show up at all. And you have a very, very hungry Baltimore Ravens team here that were down. All right. They were 0 and 2. People were panicking here. They responded in Dallas and dominated them. And now they're back home. Do you think that they're going to go? They're going to lose two in a row at home to open the season? The Baltimore Ravens? I think not. All right. All right. Every the public is what the public is immediately on the Bills because of what they just watched with the Jacksonville Jaguars game. Understandable. All right. This is a totally different team here in uh and John Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry. This is a whole monster. You're coming into Baltimore and you're expecting them to to beat them? I think not. This is going to be a, a very uh, good game here, but I do expect the Ravens to show up and bring some ground and pound and some defense. All right. We saw over 30 points, well, 40 points in that Bills game. You're going to get the complete opposite in this one. This Ravens defense at home is a different animal. Give me a complete sweep here for the Ravens. We're fading the public. I can see this right now. We're going to fade the public here, avoiding the Bills. Give me the Ravens on the money line. Give me the point spread at minus two and a half. And for the total points, give me the under on 46 and a half. I expect this Ravens defense to show up at home. They were embarrassed against the Raiders. This is the second game at home. Um, uh, and now they got to go up against the Bills. A very good opponent here. But they're going to have some answers uh, for uh, Josh Allen here and this offense. All right. They're not going to allow James Cook to run the ball. They're going to have to force... Um, uh, Josh Allen to some throwing situations and definitely mitigate his rushing ability. And they're very familiar with that because they go up against Lamar Jackson every single day. So uh, we're going to be going with the Ravens money line, Ravens minus two and a half and under on 46 and a half. Those are going to be our selections for the late slate here. Uh, let me know in that comment section down below what are going to be your plays, uh, maybe some props. We can definitely debate about that in the comment section down below. If you want to sign up for the Patreon and get these premium bets, all right, you're getting daily bets, future bets, and access to that group chat that goes off 24-7. You sign up right this second in that description section down below. This is your boy, Chef D. I'll be back very soon. Peace out.